they struggle for traction, these new GTIs, don't they? Whatever they're called on the steering wheel are shite. Aren't they? I've never had driven a car with a haptic feedback wheel. They're absolute shite. Let's see what the horn sounds like. <laughs> Typical journal. But it's not bad. Yeah. So we'll find somewhere to park up. We'll have a look around the outside and then we'll carry on with the video. This is the new Golf GTI Mark 8 finished in a nice silver. We got the uh, lower fog lights, they uh, offset the front of the car quite nicely. Going around the side we've got five spoke diamond cut wheels, a bit scuffed on this particular one. In the rear we've got a horrible little lip spoiler which just makes the car look appalling. We've got twin exit exhaust, which I don't actually think is a twin exit. I think only one of them puts any sound out. Uh, yeah, we've got the side skirt extensions that look like someone's piece glued a piece of rubber to the side of the car. We've got the nice GTI badge on the wing though. Oh, and we've got the light strip on the bottom, which some people like. Personally, but yeah, looks wise, it's not too bad. So if we've edited the video properly, 
you should have seen a little walk around video there showing you around the outside of the car so we're just having a little cruise for now trying to explore some new roads We've got some sheep in the middle of the road here I'm sure they'll appreciate a little bit of a rev bah! bro that one's got a gammy leg oh, that's... oh look at them though they forged a path for the... oh. well, I thought they'd forged a path for the GTI but then they decided not to there we go We've never been down this road, so I can't hoon it too much. And also, we are in sport mode, I think. And there's barely any noise at all when you're just cruising. There's a bit of noise when you change down flips the engine. <coughs> Let's get the uh, nav back on so I can at least see what the road looks like ahead. Oh, it picks up. It does pick up quite well actually. I'm impressed. There's a guy in a high looks. Oh no, it's a Isuzu. He looked very angry at me for some reason. Maybe this is his land and that's why I've not been down on it. Looks quite a steep hill. Is traction control on? Yeah, we've accidentally left the traction control on now, otherwise that would have all been wheel spin. Thank you. Yeah, let's switch that off. I hate driving aids, they just get in the way of fun. For some reason, to turn the traction control off in this car, you've got to go through all the horrible digital whatever screen, and then it's something to do with brakes apparently. So, to turn the traction control off, you go into the brakes sub menu. Doesn't make much sense to me. I think that actually makes the car louder as well. Oh, that's some good driving. That is some good driving. Thank you very much, sir. All wheel spin. It does pick up quite nicely though. It's a nice road. They are nice roads, yeah. One thing I will say though is the ride is very jiggly. The, the sound, even though it's pumped in, like I've already said, it doesn't sound bad. It sounds quite nice. A lot of the pumped in ones, like BMWs, they just sound proper synthetic and fake. Whereas this actually sounds a little bit like an engine. Again, we've managed to stumble across some quite nice roads. Where everyone seems to let us go. Maybe, maybe it's because it's a GTI. She's, Why is she waving? I know, she was like fully <laughs> waving at us. Happy to see this. She must think she knows us. On the change gear. Did she know? That's got me thinking. <laughs> nah, I doubt it. Oh, she recognises the YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these look like some quite bumpy roads now. Oh, watch it. Yeah. These aren't the best uh, sort of surfaces for 18 inch wheels with no profile. Again, just another thing that doesn't help the ride quality on these modern golfs. I remember the Mark 7 GTI was actually quite a nice vehicle to drive, whereas this feels uh, very overly stiff. Well, they do pick up more than the old ones. The old ones are 225 brake, I want to say. Is that right? No idea. I believe they're 225 brake, whereas this is supposedly 245. One thing you can't fault though is the DSG. The gear changes are very quick. And it's not what we needed. No, actually, yeah. The Mark 7s that we have driven before all tend to cut the gearbox in about 10 minutes of 
spirited driving. Whereas this one so far seems to be okay. They might have added some extra fins onto the bottom of the box or something. Oh, we got a bit of a pop there. We'll land again. They did it on down change as well. Twisty little back rolls like this, it's not too bad. Oh, some water pops. Like I said, though, I don't know the road, so we can't go too fast. And you believe it's great by wire, don't you? If it's not. It feels strange, the brake pedal doesn't feel connected at all. So it could be brake by wire, so the steer by wire, aren't they? Yeah, most cars are not. Yeah, most modern cars are steer, steer by wire. But the brakes, it's a strange feeling. They feel quite spongy for about a quarter of the throttle, and then they seem dead stiff. So I don't know if that's just a, a change they've made that doesn't feel right, or if it is now brake by wire. Got a bit of wheel spin here. No. I believe there's supposed to be a petrol station here. <laughs> if, if, if there is, which there is. No way. Yeah, there is. Okay, we're going to pull in here and uh, put a bit of fuel in. Soft limiter out of four. Changed a bit, hasn't it? I don't like the wheel hop. It went up to 30 psi. You see that? Yeah, it's quite a lot. Try and keep up with me, aren't they? Yeah, they are. <laughs> We've just got wheel spin at 80 miles an hour.
like I said, the best thing is the DSG hasn't cut once. Which on the old ones it really does, doesn't it? Changing up when your ha when your foot isn't on the throttle. What's the DSG like? Okay. Can't say I've ever noticed it. between 25 to 30k you can get an i30n uh, an old shape golf r maybe even with a bit more power you can get uh, the previous generation s3 uh, maybe the previous gen a45 a35 you can get uh, tts is there any more that i can't think of that's it, that's it. yeah, yeah. So for that sort of price point, yeah, it's, it's a bit debatable whether or not they're worth it. Uh, daily driving standpoint, it's not too bad. Suspension is probably a bit too stiff and the infotainment is far too annoying, I would say. Like every menu you press is in a different sub-menu. So it just gets on your nerves trying to mess with stuff. And the heated steering wheel keeps coming on because these stupid haptic buttons you barely nudge them and they come on look like for example there look i barely rub my finger on it and it turned the heat steering wheel on and it, it does my absolute head in that and i think it would annoy a lot of other people and the seats yeah the seats aren't particularly comfortable either where we've got the tartan fabric seats in this model they do do leather seats i'm not sure if the same sort of style but i can imagine they'll be a little bit more comfortable they also make your back very hot uh, yeah. Um, motorway. Um, right. yeah the motorway is not too bad you can expect figures of between 35 to 40 miles to gallon uh, myself I managed to get 35.2 uh, that's just cruising at 70 miles an hour you know with the uh, cruise assist thing that slams on when anyone comes within 20 feet of you so it's quite annoying, but again, that's just a VW thing. That's not that's not selective to this car. On the B roads, as I'm sure you've seen in the video, it is actually a, a quite a laugh on the B roads. The DSG is very good; doesn't overeat. Uh, we need fuel. The, the DSG is very good; doesn't overeat. Uh, not had any issues with the brakes overheating, but we have had issues with the brake pedal feeling quite spongy and numb. Again, it could be just to this model because it is a used car, but I don't think it is. And again, steering, look, I don't know if you can see on the video, it doesn't, there's no feeling to the steering at all. So you can fully turn into a corner. It doesn't give you any confidence because you're not quite sure where the wheels are pointing. But uh, yeah, overall opinion from me on this car would be probably about a six out of 10. What about you? I'd probably give it 6.8. 6.8 6 out of 10. Would you buy one? I'd buy the i30N. So he'd buy the i30N. I would probably buy the previous gen Audi S4. There's a lot more cars out there, I would say, for this sort of money. Even if you look towards the older ones. Like, you get an old AMG Merc for that. You know what I mean? And I'd much rather have them. You get C63 V8. 
Yeah, you could get literally a 6.3 litre V8 in the C series, in the C class. But it's not the same class. It's, it's not the same sort of car, fair enough, but. I'd rather have that. You could buy an EP3 Civic Type R for about four grand and then spend 20 grand doing it up. You could buy 20 MX5s. You could buy 20 MX5s, yeah. But to be honest, this is probably more the sort of car for people who will finance them anyway. So, if you're going to finance and spend, what, £400 a month or something, on something like this, uh, I'd say your money's better off elsewhere if you do a lot of daily driving. If you're on the motorway most of the time and like spirited drive, then it's probably alright for you. But again, I'd say the A35 or, um, again, the previous gen S4 sort of thing like that is probably better. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's about it. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Yeah. If you did, be sure to comment and let, let us know if you want to do another one. And we will be doing it anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you comment. <laughs> Take care.